Let me show you how to upload the token onto the Polygon network or Matic as they were previously called. I will show you how to do it in a very easy way. You don't even have to be a developer. But of course, if you are a developer, this is going to be even easier because I will also explain to the code behind a token on the Polygon network or Matic. So if that is something that you're interested in, if you want to get your token going on Matic or Polygon and to do it as soon as possible, smash the like right now, subscribe, click the bell button and please remember that I come to you each and every day and they make you a better blockchain developer. I give you the skills, the knowledge and the experience you're not getting anywhere else. The first thing we have to understand is that Polygon is an EVM based system and when you have EVM based systems it means that you can use Ethereum development tools in order to build on other EVM based systems. So you use the same programming language which is Solidity to build on Polygon as you do on Ethereum use the same tools such as for example remix in order to build your token which I will show you so remix you use in order to build smart contracts on ethereum and also on polygon because polygon is EVM based EVM basically means that polygon took ethereum they made some adjustments and they launched a new network and they launched a new network as a layer 2 solution to the ethereum main network but the good thing is that everything you learn about ethereum programming directly applies to polygon and you can use the same tools and you you just switch which network you deploy to. So let me now show you practically how to do a token and how easy it is to do a token on Polygon. The first step is to get a Polygon node because without a Polygon node you cannot deploy anything to the Polygon network. Polygon node is like a portal, it's a mirror onto the Polygon network which you use in order to deploy the token. So that's something you get if you go to morales.io and sign up. I will soon show you how to do it. And also you need a node in order to add Polygon to your MetaMask. So I will show you that as well. So when you go to morales.io and you sign up, you go to speedy nodes here in the menu. When you go to your dashboard, you go to speedy nodes. You will see Polygon Network right here with very, very big graphic. You cannot miss it. It says Polygon Network. You click here on endpoints. And as you can see, there is mainnet, there is mainnet archive, there is Mumbai testnet and Mumbai testnet archive. So mainnet you use in your MetaMask, you can just click here and this will add the Polygon mainnet to your MetaMask. So you click approve, you can switch network. And now if I look in my MetaMask, you see I have Polygon network. So with one click using Morales, you are right now on the Polygon uh, mainnet. Now you may be wondering what this mainnet archive means. Well, this is a way to query Polygon for historical states. So if you want to ask the Polygon network, hey, what happened in this smart contract at this past point in time, you use mainnet archive. And this is a very important topic if you are a Polygon developer that you need to know about, about. So I teach you it here in this video, connecting to Polygon full node. I explain to you ex exactly why you need it. And it's very important for many use cases to have a full archive Polygon node. But for our use case, we actually don't need it. So the only thing we need is the mainnet right here. So what you do is that you just click add to MetaMask and that's enough, that's it. We do it with one click, that's how easy it is. The next step is to go to remix.ethereum.org, remix.ethereum.org. So here is where you can program your own smart contracts and a token is a smart contract. It's a small piece of code that runs on the blockchain. And even if you're not a developer, you will be able to follow along because this is not rocket science. And this token has been done so many times. People do a thousand and new tokens each and every day which means that there is a template you can just copy paste and change some parameters and you'll get your token so you go to contracts right here and you see a few standard example contracts don't worry about this this is just some examples they show us right click on contracts new file and this one we will call token dot solve bam simple as you understand like i told you there is no rocket science. There is a blog post called Importing Open Zeppelin Smart Contracts in Remix. And Open Zeppelin is this organization, open source organization, where you have all of the templates for most common use cases in crypto. For example, how to do a token, how to do an NFT, how to do a marketplace, how to do an ICO. Open Zeppelin have collected all of these contracts and they've open sourced it so anyone can use these templates and even even if you're a good developer you want to use open zeppelin why because these are tested contracts without bugs there are so so many developers that have used them and improved them that even if you are a good developer 
you probably will use Open Zeppelin and maybe adapt it. And in this case, if you're not a developer, then you just copy paste Open Zeppelin, you change a few parameters, and that's it. And after I show you how to deploy the token, I will explain to you the code behind Open Zeppelin. So the first thing is to import this. Uh, import this file, which is the template for ERC20, and we will be doing ERC20 token on um, uh, on Polygon. So just do like this, import. Uh, that's number one. Number two, you see that we need to specify the Solidity version, and this needs to be above the import. So we just uh, go here, specify the Solidity version. That's it. Next, we need to copy the contract here, paste it. Bam. Uh, and now we can rename. We can rename the coin to something like Ivan Polygon coin. Ticker. Change the ticker to IPC. And here we can mint tokens, how many we want to mint. And we will be giving all of the tokens that we mint to ourselves. Why? Because as you can see, this is constructor function, which means that this piece of code executes whenever the token launches. And message.sender refers to whoever is interacting with the smart contract through this function. And in, th in this case is the constructor function, which means that this is the person that deployed the contract. The person that initiated constructor function is only the person who deployed the contract because constructor runs once. It runs only one time when you launch a token. So message sender here refers to whoever deployed the token. So whoever deployed the token will get this many coins. And here you don't need to worry about this, but this is to ensure that the decimals will work. But the only thing that matters is this how many coins there are, and then you specify the name and the ticker. And as you can see, we are using ERC20. We're using this template that we didn't even write ourselves. We're just using this open source, open Zeppelin template, and I will explain to you how it works as well. But for now, just know that we are using a template, we're deploying a contract, and we specify the, uh, the variables, the parameters, like the name, the ticker, and total supply. That's it, guys. It's very easy, very simple. The next step is to actually deploy it to the network, but before we can do that, we need to compile it. So we click here, and as you can see, we need to select the compiler version, and we want to use the same one as we wrote here. So let's go and select um, 6.2, this one, and we click compile token. And as you can see, it's done, it's successful. Next, we need to deploy this. And I want to use Injected Web 3 because I want to deploy to the Polygon network. In this case, I don't want to use the mainnet, which we have right now. I want to use a testnet because then I can use free testnet coins to do it. So I go back to Morales, I click on endpoints, and here, as you can see, we have the Mumbai testnet. I click add to MetaMask, and it is the same procedure as before. You approve, you switch network, now you are on Mumbai, and now we have to get some testnet coins in order to be able to upload our smart contract because that requires some testnet matic coins. And for that, we go to faucet.matic.network and then you copy your address here, paste it, submit. And uh, now we will soon have our Matic uh, testnet coin and it's faucet.matic.network. We need to confirm. Now we do have a bit of Matic testnet coins. Fantastic. So now we'll go back to Remix and ensure that when you open up your wallet and you see Polygon Mumbai testnet here, it is connected. If it's not connected, just click here. If it says not connected here, click here and it will get connected. You may have to accept something, but just ensure that it is connected. So next we go here to this tab right here and we, we select Injected Web 3. This means that Remix will be using MetaMask in order to upload the smart contract and MetaMask is connected to the Mumbai testnet, which means that it will be responsible for uploading the smart contract to the Mumbai testnet. And whatever network is in MetaMask, that is the network that Remix is gonna use. So that that is what it implies when we select Injected Web3 that Remix will just ask everything from MetaMask. And we can uh, select whatever we want to deploy. In this case, we deploy token.sol, click deploy. When we do that, we get the MetaMask confirmation and we click confirm. And now, we do have a token on the Mumbai testnet. And of course, now we want to see this token in our MetaMask. So we copy the address, which is here. We go to MetaMask, we go to assets right here. We go to add token, we paste the token, and then we go next and we click add tokens. As you can see, I have 1 million IPC coins. And you remember 
that IPC was Ivan Polygon Coin and we said that it should be called IPC and we also said that whoever deploys this smart contract will get 1 million tokens and because we deployed it, we used this address, this account right here to deploy it, we get 1 million uh, IPC. So now you can use it as a token, you can send it, you can receive it, you can do whatever you want. You have now a fully functional token on the Polygon network. Big, big congrats. And we deployed it on the testnet. For you, it's very easy to deploy on the mainnet. You just go to endpoints here in morales.io. You click on mainnet, add to MetaMask, you switch network to mainnet. You get some real Matic. So here is where you have to spend some money to get real Matic. And then you go back to Remix, you come here and you use Injected Web 3, you ensure that you are connected and it says Polygon Mainnet. And when you click deploy, it will now deploy to the actual mainnet, not the testnet. And that's how easy it is. Even if you're not a developer, you can launch your own coin on Polygon Network. And now I want to explain to you how the code works because the code is very simple. It is just a contract and a contract can be compared to a class, to a class in Java or a class in C Sharp. It is a data structure. And that contract, which we just deployed, has the internal structure, the internal functions to keep track of who owns how many coins, to send coins from one account to another, which is just taking minus from one account and then doing plus on another account. It's very simple. <laughs> it's extremely simple. Let me show you how simple it is. Even if you know a bit of programming, you spend any time in some programming education, you probably will understand the code very, very, very easily. So if we go back to Remix and then we copy this URL, this link to the ERC20 template, and I will copy it in a new tab, you will see that it's very simple smart contract which starts by defining the Solidity version and all smart contracts need to do that. Then we import some common functions that we use in many smart contracts, like for example, safe math, to do math operations in ways which doesn't overflow, doesn't underflow the numbers and so on and so forth. Some comments, and then the actual contract starts. And so you can see it's called ERC20. And in our code, we said that our token is ERC20, which means that we inherit all of the functionality from here. For example, we get all of this logic about how to keep track of balances, how to send coins from one address to another and how to update the balances. We get all of that for free by just inheriting ERC20. And as you can see, the first data structure we have is balances. And this is a key value data structure. So if you know programming, you know, for example, hash map, this is kind of like a hash map. You have key value that you have an address that links to an integer. An address is basically this address right here that we have. And integer is how many coins we have. So if you remember, we go to Mumbai testnet, I have 1 million of these coins. So in this key value store, I have my address as key, and then I have this integer 1 million as value. And everyone who is a hodler will be in this mapping. It's called mapping. Key value store in Solidity is called the mapping. So every single holder of the token will be written in this mapping right here. So if a coin has a million holders, there's gonna be a million entries in this ma mapping, one for each address. So that's number one. Number two, allowances. This is very important, especially when you think about DEXs. There is Uniswap on the Ethereum network. This is a decentralized exchange where you can trade different assets. There is QuickSwap. So QuickSwap is like Uniswap, but on Polygon, on Matic. And QuickSwap, of course, when, when they switch one coin for another in your wallet, they need to take away. They need to take your original coin and then they send you whatever coin you traded the original coin for. And here you need to allow smart contracts to do that. So allowances is a data structure that remembers which other addresses can take money from your wallet. And this is very important, for example, when you're using a DEX, because the DEX, by definition, needs to take out funds from your wallet and then put the other token into your wallet. So that's allowances. And you have this, uh, this mapping here as well, keeping track of this. You have total supply, you have name, you have symbol decimals, and then you can go through each and every, each and every uh, function here. And for example, you have allowance that you can ask who the owner is and who the spender is, and it will return whether this spender address can use the funds from the owner address. You can transfer uh, coins from one address to another. You specify recipient, 
and amount, how much you want to transfer, and then this internal transfer function will be called, which is down here, where we see transfer here. And as you can see, it has sender, recipient, amount. Uh, and in this case, we check so that nothing is zero. So for example, the sender is not a zero address, recipient is not a zero address. This is just some sanity checks. And then we subtract from the sender and we add to the recipient. Very easy. This is elementary. This is elementary. This is how easy it is. You have other functions like mint, for example. You know that we used mint in order to start the smart contract. We gave ourselves 1 million coins. And here we also do some signage check so it's not a zero address. Then we add the tokens to total supply. When we mint new coins, we need to increase total supply. And we give coins to whoever is uh, specified as an address in the argument right here. So as you can see, we use balances mapping. You remember that balances is the key value store that keeps track of everyone's money. So we use that, we use the account as key, whatever account is here that should get the minted coins, we use it as key and we simply increase. As you can see, we run add on that field and then we increase the the balance by the amount. So that's how easy it is, that's how simple it is. And of course you can read about other functions, but you, you know the 99% the of everything you need to know by just looking at total supply, transfer and balances. And also knowing about allowance. If you know total supply, how that works. If you know balances, key value structure, you know allowances, how, that, how they work, and you know how transfer function works, you know 99% you need to know about the ERC20 uh, token. But the most important thing, if you are a developer and you see this code, you probably see how simple it is. This is not rocket science, guys. People who do coins are not rocket scientists. And many of them don't even know how to program. <laughs> and this video proves it. This video proves it. When somebody tells you, hey, I have my own cryptocurrency, they're not a, an Einstein, okay? Uh, but there are many use cases where you need a crypto, but also many people are so impressed when they see someone who has their own coin, they're saying, wow, you have your own you must be very smart. Not really, guys. You don't need to be smart to do your own coin, but this is just the beginning of something big. Maybe you have a good idea, a good project, something you want to tokenize. Use this code and I wish you good luck. That being said, guys, smash the like, subscribe to the channel, enjoy your day, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Have a good day and goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Thank you.